So from here, what we'll do is we'll just have a look at the project base points and take a look at these coordinates on the right hand side. They're rather large. Okay. Now in our AutoCAD file, you'll notice that we do have. Um, let's have a look. If I come to here and choose Utilities ID points, and then just select this particular point here, you'll notice that we've got four decimal points past. Or four decimal places past the decimal point. Um, so we need to mimic that in the Revit environment. So we'll go back to Revit and we'll choose Manage, Project Units, and Length. And in here we can change it to three decimal places, Custom, and then just stick an extra zero in there. Then we have four decimal places, four decimal places past the decimal point. So OK. And OK to that. Now that's that sorted out. So now if I come back to my project base point, you'll see that we have. The decimal points, uh, decimal places past the decimal point are correct. And what we need to do now is start drawing some walls um, because it's all very well and good. We've moved the survey point, we've got GPS information there uh, at this particular point, but how do we start getting more information out of the building model? So let's start uh, drawing some walls and positioning the walls around the outline of the proposed um, development here. I'm going to change to the project north. Like so, and then I'm going to zoom in. There we go. Choose architecture wall, and I'm going to draw from the finished face exterior, like so. Now I'm being naughty. I wouldn't normally draw on the site plan for this, but just bear in mind that it is the walls are actually sitting on level zero, which is why they they look white. Yeah, it's because we're looking from from above. Okay. So there's our start of our external envelope. Now if I change the orientation of the view to true north again and then so to fit. You see how everything just mi just manipulates as it should. The orientation of the walls is correct regardless, which is exactly what we want. Okay. So let's leave it true north. Now let's take a look at uh, the coordinates um, because we did want to use GPS coordinates, so we may want to pick up the GPS coordinate here. So when we go to build this um, property, uh, our, our ground workers can go to site and they can use the GPS information, GPS tool to generate the GPS information, and it makes a beeping sound. And when it gets as close to the points as it needs to be. It starts to beep uh, more consistently until it becomes a uh, continuous tone. Then it knows it's, or they know they're in exactly the right coordinate, and then they'll put a stake in the ground and that'll mark it. Um, but we need to be able to tell them those coordinates, don't we? Um, so let's go ahead and generate those coordinates. Now, if we go to the annotate tab, we can use the spot coordinates um, annotation symbol to tell us where that particular point is in relation to the GPS coordinates. So if I pick that corner, left mouse click, left mouse click again, and we'll zoom in. Let's just take a look at that coordinate there. Can you see it's a rather large number? Although that geometry only resides that far away from the origin. Okay, that's something to consider. Uh, so our model geometry is well within the uh, tolerated 20 mile radius from the uh, from the uh, internal project origin within Revit. Um, but we may consider. Uh, having a local setup point as well, which is where the project unclipping the project base point comes in. So if I press escape now and let's go ahead and move the project base point. Um, and this is the reason why you move the project base point. We'll select it and it's key here to unclip it. If you don't unclip it, you'll move out all the geometry and the annotation symbols. Okay, we don't want to do that. Uh, we are going to go into why you would do that in the next few steps. Um, but at the moment, unclip it and then we're just going to move the project base point to the corner of the building. So from that point there to that point there okay notice the coordinates move however these coordinates remain unchanged because these coordinates are actually talking to the survey point that's the most important thing to remember about this particular annotation symbol so I'll leave the project base point there now why have I moved it I want to create a setting out point and that is going to be my zero zero so what I'm going to do is prove to you that, that is zero zero although it does have coordinates on it okay that are relative, and this is the main thing, relative to the survey points. Now, let's go to our spot coordinate, and I'm going to choose edit type, because this particular spot coordinate, if I look at its properties, it's looking at the survey point and gaining its information um, from the coordinate origin survey point. Now, I'm going to rename this horizontal dash survey point, 
estimates here, okay? And I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call the next one project base point. So, okay, again. Now, uh, what I need to do is just change the setting here from survey points to project base points so that it matches the name and then say OK. So when I start to draw now, notice the 0, 0 yeah, from that particular point. So it says the project base point now is my 0, 0 and anything from that is relative to that project base point. So we have a local setting out point and the GPS setting out point. So if I uh, select the GPS setting, out point, GPS setting out coordinate, create similar, I can then start to place these also. And in fact, you can have two in the same place. So we have a local and a GPS setting out point. Okay, so that's that covered. And that's why we have the project base points and the survey points. And that's why we have to unclip it, move it, and then start to draw relative or sorry, start to place our annotation um, spot coordinates in relation to our building which in then turn will look at the project base point and ask the project base point its coordinates from the project base point. From there we may be put in position where we think to ourselves okay let's let's change the uh, let's change the design slightly. We now want to say that our building is over here okay because we can no longer build it over here for whatever reasons. Okay, so maybe some of the site uh, soil tests have turned out that we can't we can't work there. So the new proposal is built, um, but at this moment in time, the project itself or the building project itself is is quite a way developed. Although we've only drawn a few walls, um, we could possibly imagine that the project has developed much further. It's watertight. It's got all of the bits and pieces like floors, doors, constraints and so on um, for certain things have been put in place. Now if you were to use the uh, typical way in CAD of just selecting all those elements and then moving them you'd end up with problems. Reason being is the, co uh, the uh, constraints within the project won't be satisfied if they're set. So therefore we have to think of a way of moving the project uh, without destroying the constraints and breaking the model. So this is how you do it. Firstly, what I want to show you is the project base point itself. If I unclip it, so there's a red line through the paperclip, right mouse click and choose move to startup location. That there is the Revit origin. Okay? At this moment in time, I'm going to undo that. Put the project base point back on the corner. Now, I'm going to select the project base point, clip it, and I'm going to move the project base point. So I'm going to move it from there to there. Notice all the geometry moved. So the walls moved, the annotation symbols moved, the project base point moved, the uh, linked CAD file didn't move because it's using the shared coordinate system now between this project and indeed itself the drawing in AutoCAD. So what I want to show you now though is that the Revit origin has shifted also. So the, the relationship of the Revit origin to our geometry hasn't changed. That is essential. Yeah? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unclick this now, right mouse click and move to startup location and notice how the offset has taken place. Exactly the same offset as here. From here to here is the same distance as from here to here. So in fact what's happening is there seems to be a, a almost like a plate that can be moved. And all of the geometry and the annotation symbols sit on that plate and they can be moved. This is why the origin moves when you clip the project base point and move it. Okay, now if I just return the project base point back to its original condition um, or location, I should say, like so, we now know that our project base point is no longer our origin, never was the origin, in fact. Okay, the project base point is simply a datum, as is the survey. The origin is somewhere over here. It would be really helpful if um, they could actually indicate the, the, the origin of Revit so that it was clearer that there are actually three items in play. We have a project base point, a survey point, and an internal Revit origin. Okay, so this is the workflow that you should adopt if you are using GPS information and if you're ever in a position where you need to um, move your project. And just so you know, um, when we move the project from here to here, we use the clipped uh, project base point, and it's exactly the same as going to the Manage tab, choosing uh, position, and using the Relocate Project tool.